A long time ago, I was with a friend of mine, and his grandmother was in the hospital dying, and he wanted me to take her go see her. I was young, and she was dying. She had terminal illness. She knew she was dying. She asked her grandson to come see her. So I took him. We go in the hospital room, and you know, she was in. So I was standing behind him. We was at her bed. She said to him, she said, do you know your great-grandfather's name? My boy said, no, nah, mom, dear, I, I don't know. She said, you know why you don't know his name? He said, why, mom, dear? She said, because he ain't leave you now. He, she said, when you walk away from my bed, you ain't going to see me no more. She said, go live your life so your children's grandchildren will know your name. Live a life where your children's grandchildren will know who you was, man. That they know your name. But they ain't going to know your name if you wasn't great. They ain't going to know your name if you don't leave them something. You cannot leave your family your job. My mom and dad, as great as they were, they left me empty-handed. But boy, the church she put in me, the God she put in me, my father instilled in me manhood. Do what you say you're going to do. Them two things from that Sunday school teacher and that coal miner shape and form who you standing in front of today. This who in front of you. Somebody, but that lesson that that grandmother taught that, taught that dude, it wasn't for him. It was for me. See, God just sent me that at day. But I needed to hear that. And ever since then, I've been trying to make my life so my children's grandchildren would know who I was when I leave this earth. That's what you got to do. You ain't got to clap for me. I, I don't really care. Look, man, I'm going to teach you four things real quick. Now, people told me one time, said, Steve, you missed your call. You should have been a preacher. No, no. I cuss way too much. I'm the last person need to be in a pulpit. I promised Dr. Boyd I wasn't going to cuss today. Now, I wanted to three times already, but I haven't because Dr. Boyd said this is a dignified event. So I'm just going to honor that. Me personally, I don't see nothing wrong with cussing. Somebody said, but Steve, his kids in here. All your kids done heard cussing. And if they haven't, I recommend you start because it cuts back on butt whippings. I am. Um, lesson one is live your life so your children's grandchildren will know who you are. Go be great, y'all. Take this degree and make it more than just a piece of paper hanging on the wall. Take this degree and go change some lives with it. Make it up. Put pressure on yourself. Go out there and, and ask God to help make you great. Don't go be regular. I don't really care for regular. I never really wanted a life. I wanted an extraordinary life. I've been asking God for this my whole life. Now what he gave me is grace. Way more than I ever asked for. I ain't never thought I'd be. Look, I already know. Y'all could have had a bigger star come down here. Somebody with a bigger name could have. No, no, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. No. I don't even know why I said it. I, <laughs> I, I tried to be humble, but let, let's quit front. You know good and well. I'm all that in a bag of chips. I'm Steve Harvey, man. <laughs> Dr. Phil don't even know where your school at. Ellen thought ASU was Arizona State. Y'all got who want to be here. I come down here, man, because I want to come down here. Look, and bottom line, it's a lot. It's diverse people in here. But can I tell you something? I love black people. I've loved black people my entire life. I ain't never shunned away from the fact that I was black. I starred on BET. I still go on BT. I know where it come from. Black people made me famous first. I crossed over, but my crossover was different. I built a bridge, and I let everybody come over here and see how I am. But I didn't get on the bridge and go over there. Because see, when the bridge burned down, you got to be able to get back home. I never left home. So I've been this here the whole time. That's no disrespect to anybody sitting in here. I just got to talk real with you. Now, if you didn't want real, you should have had somebody else come down here. But this is the truth of the matter. Now, second thing I want to teach you. I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. You got to learn this one now. I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. Because this is what you're going to have to do. Because let me tell you something. As successful as you've been up to this point, once again, I congratulate you to the fullest. But let me tell you something. You about to get to fail. you Because you finna taste life like it really is. Bill Bailey and I have been involved in other enterprises, but the enterprise, you know, fortunately was successful and we had a chance to affect a lot of other people's lives. But guess what happened over those years and which continues to today, we continue to invest in each other. I come up with a great idea, I get on the phone, I call him. He comes up with a book he's read, he said, this is a masterpiece, you've got to read it. So we have this chance to invest each other. And while we walk the farm country of Kentucky, we invest in each other. Uh, we walk the beaches of California and he has a habit of grabbing your arm when you're walking and talking. So he would grab my arm until this one would get sore and then we'd trade places so he could, you know, grab the other arm for a while while we're walking and talking. But a chance to contribute to each other. 
And what I share with him, he shares with others. And what he shares with me, I share with you and others around the world. That contribution of sharing with each other, being influential, leadership, making a contribution to someone's life that no telling how far it may go from the time it starts. Friendship is wow, it's one of the most valuable possessions in the world. Good friends, relationships, you know, what really matters when we all get right down to it is that inner circle. When we should spend as much time as possible, maximum time, maybe borrow a little from other things that aren't quite that valuable, that are essential but not quite that valuable, and spend more time, family, inner circle, close friends. Because that's where a lot of the drive and ambition to do well comes from. Making dreams come true for that inner circle. You and them furnishes the fuel for high ambition. Not to be ambitious just for the name or for the fame or for the money or for the useful things you can do like generosity for the future, but at least to do as much as you can to nourish that association, communication, inner circle. Conversations in art, whether it's with a child or whether it's with husband and wife or friends. Used to be years ago, we wrote letters that only got sent or you know received once in a while. Now we just jump on the phone and talk. But back then, people seemed to take thoughtful care about putting into words how they really felt. And it's easy to be a bit too casual and not put as much how you really care into language. Especially when we're talking all day long and all day long. It's hard to be that unique when we really would like to be unique, say something extraordinary about how we feel. But it gets lost in sort of the mundane, ordinary conversation rather than taking the time to say something unique about how you care and about how you feel. When Judy, my wife and I, when we parted ways, there's a chance to be, it's one expression called born again or reborn. We have a father for the first time as well as a new baby. We have a new father. So it's the new baby's life to work out. Now it's also the new father's life. And probably as a father, best instruction would be to study and practice and work hard at seeing if you couldn't be a class A father. If it's the mother's first time, we have a brand new baby, but a brand new mother. Now that she has a chance to live a brand new life, different life experience than ever before, shouldn't she study and practice and learn, listen, try to find ways to become a class A mother? About 16 years ago, I became a grandfather, and I have practiced diligently now the last 16 years of being a five-star grandfather to my two grandchildren, Nathaniel and Natalie. They're exceptional, highly talented. I just published a book of my granddaughter's poems that she wrote when she was 12, and the art illustration by her brother, Nathaniel. I Love What I See is the title by Natalie Pangrazio. Now she's 15, and she's written now a collection of 10 stories for children. And her brother, Nathaniel, is an accomplished classical pianist. And he writes music, sends it off for competition. These are talented kids, artists, and writers and musicians at such a young age. So what I've done is try to specialize, helping my granddaughter publish this book when she was, what, 14, the poem she wrote when she was 12. It's really good. I've got to read you something. I told you about my granddaughter, Natalie. She wrote these poems, and we're publishing them, and here's one when she was 12. It's called Metaphors of Flowers. From those whose imaginations love to take flight, they will use even a flower to determine wrong from right. An iris is like wisdom, the deep color like the depth of knowledge, and the yellow like the bright ideas one receives. The knowledge spreads upwards as do the iris's leaves. A lily is simplicity like the whiteness of its flower, but in simplicity there is beauty like the yellow stamen's tower. Truth is like a dandelion which is bold and has not sinned, and truth is spread far and wide like dandelion seeds upon the wind. They soon find a place to rest and grow in someone's heart, and the cycle begins again just as it did start. A daisy is like happiness and spreads its face to the sun. It loves everything around it and in everything finds fun. Hate is like a thistle, which is awful and sharp to the touch. It combines envy, anger, and most of all, disgust. And finally, best of all, love represents a rose. Love is sweet to your heart as a rose is to your nose. Love combines trust, hope, faith, and integrity. There are good paths and bad paths, and no matter which one you chose, love is just as sweet as the loveliest rose. My granddaughter. When I'm broken, I relish it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to use it because if I'm broken, then I just found my limitations. And until I know what my limitations are, how can I push them? How can I get better? But 
once I see it, once I feel it, once I see where I was broken, then I can attack that weakness. I can fill in that. gap, I can reinforce that breach. If you break, it means it's time to fortify your will to make it stronger. And look, there's, there's all kinds of different ways to break. You can break physically, you can break mentally, you can break your heart, you can break your spirit, and none of those are fun, and all of those are going to leave a mark, but the mark that they leave can be the mark of victory, or can be the mark of defeat, because every time you break, and in every way that you break, while it's a chance, it's definitely a chance for you to give up, and for you to just to fall apart. But there's also opportunity. There's opportunity to get stronger, and get smarter, and get faster, and get tougher, and get more stable, and get more resilient, and get better. When you break, you have the opportunity to show the world the whole world what you are really made of so So if you break, if, if you break, the fight isn't over. In fact, if you break, the fight is just beginning. And as you crawl up and out of that dismal and wretched place, covered, and you're covered in blood and sweat and dirt and filth as you rise above what you were, and as you take the form of, of who you are supposed to be, you will see that in the very act of standing up, in the very act of fighting on, you will become and you will remain unbroken.
the number one thing that's going to change your life, the only thing that will change your life, change your business, change your money, change your relationship, is you must raise your standard. Now, I know that sounds boring, stupid, basic, but it's the truth. The only thing that changes our life long term is when we raise our standards. What does that mean? That sounds so boring and dumb. It means that all of us in life have things we want. We don't get what we want. We get what we have to have. Remember I said earlier, we all get what we tolerate in ourselves and other people. But when you're no longer willing to tolerate something, that's when your life changes. The difference in people is their standards, period. The difference in people is their standards, period. What do I mean by standards? Everyone in the world has a list of things they think they should do. I should lose weight. I should work out. I should spend more time with my kids. I should work harder. I should make more calls. I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you know what? People don't do their shoulds and they get mad at themselves and make what I call shit all over themselves. They beat themselves up about it. What changes people is when your should becomes a must. When suddenly the thing you said should happen has to happen. That's when human beings change. It's like if you want to take the island and you're the head of the army and you want to take the island, the most powerful way to take the island is burn the boats. Because if there's no way to go back, it's amazing what happens when it's a must to do something versus a should. That's what makes human beings succeed. 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 Succeed.